If you look at a water molecule that has an oxygen-hydrogen bond, if you replace hydrogen with deuterium, it's going to take seven times long, longer to break that bond, and it would take significantly more energy to break that bond. And that's the same in hydrogen bonding networks in biological systems. So the deterioration of our cells or DNA and its fat compartments have a major impact of their phenotype or biological behavior. And um, actually diet controls this process. Usually sugars or, or carbohydrates are high in deuterium. And on the other hand, fat and ketogenic products are low in deuterium. So when we oxidize these substrates, our mitochondria, in the first step, they always produce water. There's different deuterium content in mitochondrial matrix water, depending on what you oxidize. And ketogenic diet, we believe, contributes significantly to the intracellular, more specifically intra-mitochondrial deuterium depletion, where this water is produced. And therapeutic effect can be mimicked using deuterium depleted water as drinking water as a very efficacious cancer treatment. In very aggressive cancers, we can actually make patients who drink deuterium depleted water in uh, coordination with their standard therapy, um, sometimes four, five times longer than they would just um, um, have survival on standard medical care. So obviously, understanding the biochemistry of it is a, is a major area to explore. scientist Lobri de Bruyne who discovered that actually turning glucose into fructose or turning fructose into glucose called, through an enzyme called isomerase. Well, at that time they didn't know about enzymes, they just knew about this chemical reaction of what we call isomerization when actually you, you don't change the chemical structure other than that just re, you just rearrange certain atoms atoms in, in, in the molecule. And that's what glucose and fructose uh, does. It actually, um, you switch hydrogens and oxygens between two carbons, or at least in, in a more broad terms, the first three carbons are involved in this hydrogen-oxygen exchange. Now, <clears throat> for a very long time, and still, uh, biochemists think that actually this hydrogen switch takes place in and within the glucose and fructose molecules. That's not true. Actually, the hydrogens always get picked up from water, from cytoplasmic water. And hydrogen is consumed, but it's not the same hydrogen that jumps from one carbon to the other, but there's water in, incorporated in the process. So this water, whatever is in the cytoplasm, will determine the hydrogen content of fructose and not the hydrogen content of glucose. So there is this water, like the intermediary guy, that actually regulates the deuterium content of fructose. And since fructose is the source of DNA, it can de deuterate DNA unless if the deuterium comes from glucose. But if there's deuterium depleted water in our cells, the heavy deuterium on glucose can be switched to a light hydrogen when it turns into fructose. So providing deuterium depleted water as the source of, of, of water for this reaction, we can regulate deuterium content in our DNA sugar backbone. In that sense, we can actually make our DNA more sensitive to breaking by radiation therapy and we can actually regulate the amount of DNA based on this deuterium depleted water and hydrogen deuterium switch between glucose and fructose when this isomeration or this reaction take, takes place.